Tonight I bring you five werewolf encounters. Make sure your doors are locked. Also your windows and your blinds are closed. That way, it can't sniff you out. This happened while I was a freshman in high school in the town of Palm Beach Gardens, Florida in 1999. I lived in a townhome rental community neighboring the small housing area called Cabana Colony. My best friend Wayne lived there and we would always have sleepovers and explore the deep woods which surrounded the back half of his neighborhood. No one knows how deep it went, but we loved it. Nothing ever did happen, just rumors of a dog-like creature that lived in the woods. But we figured it was just them parents trying to keep us away from getting lost out there, so we paid it no mind. We've been in there before, and only come across old paintball setups from people. And we've even come across a tent for some homeless person who had a bunch of porno magazines inside, which was super funny to us, but we were too scared to ever go inside the tent. One evening, in the summer of 99, I was sleeping over at Wayne's house. It was hot and humid that day. Wayne and I were up to some exploring in the woods again with our flashlights and pocket knives, looking for something fun to get into. Maybe find a cool fort, or a treehouse, or something cool that we could call our own and tell no one else about. That night, we went deeper than we ever had before. It was 8pm and was dark out, we ended up getting a little lost. Okay, we were really lost, but we didn't freak out about it as we assumed we would try to backtrack to find our way out back onto the streets. We heard branches snapping around us. We couldn't pinpoint what direction it was coming from. Then we heard it. The howl. It was loud. I knew for a fact it was close. Whatever it was, it was nearby and probably could smell us. We kept walking, but slowed our pace not to attract any further unwanted attention. Then we saw the body. There was a body lying in the dirt ground about 20 feet ahead of us. It was Gary. A high school dropout neighborhood bully. The guy was huge and always wanted to pick on the smaller kids. There was blood everywhere. His chest was ripped open and a large hole remained. His heart was missing from his body. Wayne leaned over and threw up and I grabbed a nearby tree to keep from fainting trying to catch my breath. Oh my god dude, Gary's dead, I said. Then I saw the eyes in the brush further ahead of us, just looking at us, staring. It's amber glowing eyes watching us like a snake does to its prey. We froze in fear seeing this wolf head with dark black hair and pointy ears just staring at us like it's protecting its food or something. I wasn't thinking straight. I just screamed to Wayne, RUN! And we turned around and ran as fast as we could back in the direction we came. I don't think we ever ran that fast in our whole lives. Luckily, we made it back to the street where we left our bikes. The werewolf, dogman, whatever the hell you want to call it was real. It didn't follow or chase us, thank God. I truly believe it was just protecting its meal or it would have attacked us or followed us. Needless to say, we never went back in those woods again. My name is George and I'm 10. My friends Zach and Robert are all in the same grade and we go to the same school in Alpine, California. We were having a sleepover at my house as I had a huge backyard which connected to the forest and had one of those above ground pools. 
We planned on having pizza and soda and watch some movies or even just playing some Resident Evil on my PlayStation. That night, we were in the forest line looking for the high ground. In the words of Ernest P. Worrell from that Halloween movie called Ernest Scared Stupid, basically meaning the perfect tree. The perfect treehouse for our future fort. The sun was setting and we thought that we had just found the perfect tree to start building our newest fort. We were super excited as it wasn't too high for us to climb to bring the wood and board and nails and stuff. There was a growl that scared the crap out of us as we turned in the direction it came from to see this wolf-like creature running on its back two legs like a human hunched over across the grass, grabbing a small animal and disappearing into the bushes. It all happened so fast we couldn't even figure out what kind of animal it took. Was it some baby deer? Or a coyote? None of us knew. We were too shocked to really care at the moment. We all huddled close together and waited. Nothing. The forest was completely silent. Too silent. We need to get back home, I mumbled to the others. Zack nodded, but Robert didn't respond. He was in shock, which was totally understandable. We slowly walked through the woods in the direction of my house. We heard cries from whatever animal the wolf creature snagged and it sounded like it was in pure pain. I felt bad for the animal knowing it was probably being ripped to shreds or eaten alive. We eventually made it back home and ran inside, locking the doors behind us, telling my mom what had happened. Of course, she didn't believe a word we said and laughed it off as a prank and told us, That's what you get for being in the woods after dark. Wow. Thanks, Mom. My name is Karina and I live in a rural town called Halalapan in the province of Puebla, Mexico. There are many rumors of wolf creatures to skinwalkers and witches that could take forms of animals from the practice of black magic. There's a lot of evil in this area, but I have yet to see any proof of any of these stories. Until last night. I'm telling this story just in case I go missing. And if that's the case, then I am already dead. My friends and I were walking back home from town. There's only a dirt path which the vehicles use, as there's no blacktop or sidewalks out here. It's pretty jungle, to say the least. It was already dark, as it takes over two hours to walk home on foot. When in the distance, about 30 meters away, we saw this werewolf black monster in the woods to our left. It was howling and running through the woods, breaking down everything in its path towards our direction. We all screamed and I accidentally dropped my sweater which I was holding as it was humid out that night so we all bolted back towards town. It would have been foolish to separate in the woods. That's just suicide, I thought. Luckily, a farmer's truck was driving towards us as we signaled him and hopped in the bed of his truck and told him to step on it. It was an emergency, and there's a wolf coming, is what we said. Thank God he did as we told him or else the werewolf would have caught up to his truck and killed us all. We later on made it back into town and I stayed at my aunt's house who ran a taxi business in the touristic area of the village. I'm writing this in her spare bedroom, now realizing that I didn't pick up my sweater from the encounter. There's a black claw reaching the window's edge and bright red eyes staring right at me as the creature squeaks into the window frame inside my room. <laughs> Ah! <laughs>
I'm a 37-year-old white male, and I live in southern Idaho, the Boise Nampa Meridian area to be exact. We just moved up here from California as the cost of living is too high and it's just overcrowded and their laws are ridiculous. We had just bought our home in Nampa and went on our first camping trip since the move to northern Idaho up in the mountains. We had heard about the bears and coyotes and didn't pay it no mind as we love nature and respect it. We arrived at Beauty Creek Campground and set up camp. We picked a spot deeper from the rest of the campers as we like to have our own privacy. We had just barbecued dinner and had some s'mores and had a few beers. Later on, it caught up with me and I had to take a piss. Nature calls and I didn't feel like walking downhill towards the pit bathroom that smells like shit, so I ventured into the woods. Mind you, I took a flashlight but I went alone and no one knew where I went to piss as it was 2am and everyone else was asleep. I was doing my thing against a large tree when I heard a howl in the distance. Now, I've heard coyotes before, but this was different. This had a different tone to it, plus it didn't sound too far away either which gave me goosebumps down my spine. I then saw the head of the beast to my right about 25 feet away, snarling its mouth with razor sharp teeth drooling. This thing was tall, maybe 6 or 7 feet high, as if it was on its back legs like a man. But it was no man. This scared the living crap out of me and I zipped up my zipper and ran back to camp yelling my wife's name. She got out from the tent, rubbing her eyes, looking puzzled. I screamed, Wolf! Get the keys and get to the truck now! She snaps in the flight mode and grabs the keys and follows me racing out to my truck and we get the hell out of there as fast as we could until we get to the highway. We never did go back for our things. I know I screamed Wolf, but I know deep down, that was no Wolf. We never went back camping there again. My name's Esther and I'm 21. I live in a small town called Ramona in Southern California. Now out here things tend to happen that cannot be explained and I don't want to explain them if I have the choice in the matter. I believe to each their own and mind my own business, but this business came into my backyard uninvited. I was playing with my kids and our pit bull dog named Vicious in our backyard and it was getting kind of late waiting for my fiancé to get home from work. I suddenly heard the sounds of something large moving through the large brush beyond our backyard fence. Now. We don't have a normal six-foot wooden fence or anything. It's more like three feet old and busty. This lichen-like furry creature shows itself and it's staring right at me. I'm shocked and frozen to the core, holding my kids in my arms as they fight to break free, not knowing what is going on at that particular moment. My dog, Vicious, leaps into action, jumping as high as his body is capable of, barking loud with the killer instinct tone in his bark. Vicious is not the biggest pit bull out there, but he is as tough as nails and buffer than any man I've ever known, even if he's a dog. The werewolf-like creature is caught by surprise by my dog and is puzzled and slowly walks backwards back into the woods from where it came from. I sensed a little fear from the creature. This creature was way larger than her dog and could probably kill him if he wanted to to get to us. But I'm assuming it didn't want the hassle or risk of being injured in the attempt and changed its mind. 
Vicious is the best dog alive, and we love him very much. We never did see that creature again.